Hi book fans, I want to tell you about the book Hector and the Search for Lost Time by Francois Lord. It's the third one in a series, the first one obviously being Hector and a Search for Happiness uh, and then Hector and the Secrets of Love and I've already reviewed those on my channel so I suppose I can link them in the description below and you can easily find them. Um, do read the first one uh, first, obviously, uh, just because it's the first one. I mean, if you're not interested in happiness and more interested in time, then you can jump straight to the third. Uh, but actually, it might give away little details about what happened in the first one with um, Hector and Clara. Um, they do, I think, fit as individual stories, but obviously there's little details in there about what happened in previous books. So just a warning, but actually, to be fair, it's really not a big deal if you just jump straight into the third one and read it, but I don't think you would do that, because if you enjoy the series, it's better to start from, obviously, the first and work through. What did I want to say about the book? Yes, I do. I love it. I love uh, this character, Hector. I think in my other review I said he's becoming uh, one of my favourite characters in fiction. And this is true. I really enjoy this character. And I really enjoy the writing style, which is my first point that I want to make, is the readability of these books, which I've already mentioned in the other videos. These books are really readable. But when I read Hector in A Search for Happiness, I thought, like, this is kind of a strange writing style in the sense that it's written as if um, the author was speaking to a child but then there's also really advanced vocabulary in there it's not like you're reading a book written by a psychologist where it's all really heavy text and ideas it's really simplified uh, like he's speaking to an intelligent child and uh, I just love that style it's fun it's readable it's easygoing um, it's gripping, it's hooking, it's not a heavy read considering it's psychology which is really really cleverly done because you do receive um, a lot of ideas, a lot of different kind of psychological advice um, and also in this book he talks about a lot of the philosophers like Nietzsche and Aristotle and uh, other people too, but he does it in a fun way, like he calls them the philosopher with the big moustache and the philosopher with the small moustache, uh, which is just a fun spin to put on it. It doesn't make it super serious as if you've got to wrap your brain around some really uh, difficult philosophical idea, which turns out to be fairly simple actually, just the way that it's written makes it seem harder than it actually is, and uh, Francois Lelord does that really well. He uh, is able to take these big ideas and simplify them and put them into a really fun and enjoyable book that I feel uh, a teenager could enjoy. So the readability is just fantastic. I love this style. I absolutely love it. Um, what I didn't enjoy about the third book is that I couldn't see where it fitted in. So the first one, Hector and the Search for Happiness, obviously has a plot line and Hector and Clara. And then the second one, with Hector and Cla Clara, um, Hector goes off to China and gets up to a little bit of mischief, shall we say. Um, but it fits in. It's obviously a follow-on from the first book. And then obviously the next one, Hector and the Search for Lost Time, should be a follow-up to that, but actually what happened in the second book was never mentioned in the third, at least I didn't pick up on it. So in the second one we actually have all of these links back to the first, like the, the narrator goes, oh if you remember in the first book like this happened, oh if you remember Hector learnt that on his previous journey. Uh, and in the third one it doesn't link, it does link back, but it doesn't link back to the second. So I was trying to place it time-wise. Is this uh, a prequel to the second and a sequel to the first? Or is this a sequel to both of them? 
or is this perhaps a prequel to the first one? It turns out it wasn't, because there was a line in there that I read which linked it back to the first. And so then I placed it, okay, it's after the first. Well, is it after the second or before the second? And I just couldn't place it like that. So I wish that there were actually some memories that Hector had that linked back to the second so we could officially place this book in the in the correct order because what happened in the second I don't want to spoil it with a certain girl who and a certain guy as well the manager of the company Kantha no mention of him at all in the third book such an important character of the second book no mention of him in the third so that just confused me and I wish that there was at least some mention of the character Gunther in the third book um, so we would understand oh right okay yeah this is the story has um, built upon what happened in the second one transgressed is that the right word? Right. Third point. Just a little point about what I thought, thought about the book. I really like it. It kind of had a journalistic quality. I would describe that as uh, the way that Hector evolves through the book. Um, and we have his evolving ideas about time. And also he goes around and meets a lot of other people. Uh, characters who tell him their perspective on, on time so the book becomes kind of like a collection of ideas of time and I found that to be quite interesting it just um, I felt that was like journalism it was like going around and asking different people their views and then building a collection of different viewpoints uh, of what the people thought that time was and uh, as a reader, that's interesting because obviously you have your own ideas and you come to the book with your own ideas about what is time and then you can read the different opinions. You're not just getting one opinion about time and going, oh, okay, that's what this book is about. Uh, you have the main character, but you also have these other side characters along the way who you can go, oh, I agree with him, or, but I don't agree with him. Oh, I can see what he's saying, but I don't agree with her. And that's really interesting. It's really well done in this book. And it would make a really interesting discussion point to see who, as a reader, relates to which character. Because um, I could see that I related to a certain character in that book, which was the one called Roger, who um, goes around speaking about God all the time uh, and has the idea that time is eternal and... Uh, everything is up to God and yeah that I relate to that and that would be my point of view and my stance but obviously there's many people who have a different attitude and a different idea and um, they wouldn't relate to Roger in the way that I did they might relate to another character which is interesting because it means that in the book there's a character that they can relate to and it opens up the um, floor for the potential debates that we might have to come to our own uh, better understanding of the way that we perceive time. So the book uh, could act as a springboard for discussion into that uh, by the way that it portrayed the many different attitudes of the characters. And I thought that was fantastically done in this book. So, it's another one that would definitely be put on my recommendation lists, just to sum up and put it in a nutshell. I really love the readability of these books, I really love Hector as a character, uh, and his adventures, and the people that he meets. Um, this book, I feel, didn't quite fit in, or I couldn't locate it. Uh, within the other books in the series, but I don't think that's a huge issue because the book was actually, in itself, a really nice uh, novel, fun to read, and uh, a good adventure story. 
So I hope if you read it, you're going to like it. You might learn something, you might not. Just a quick note, I feel that as a 30-year-old guy who's already read a lot of books and come to a firmer understanding of what this life is, the lessons in this book didn't really have a lot to offer me. Uh, however, if you're a younger reader, you might find something of use that could help you in your life. And if you're an older reader, then I think you're just going to enjoy the adventure story that it is. So, thanks for watching the video. Please leave your comments below. Let me know what you thought of the book. Uh, if you've got any book recommendations, please let me know. Enjoy your reading and uh, keep living. Bye-bye.